well, well, it is finally complete. The Eagles have both of their coordinators. It is set. It is official. It is done. And Kellen Moore is the new offensive corner for the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to give my thoughts on it. And to be honest, the more I've been kind of going through it, the more I think this makes perfect sense in a lot of ways. And I know a lot of Eagle fans will probably won't like it, but I know why they're doing this. Let's get into it. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Yo, yeah, yeah, what is going on, guys? I hope everyone's having a fantastic day. So today was the day, really last night, depending on when you're watching this video. We had Vic Fangio was official, uh, and then we had uh, Kellen Moore is the new offensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. A lot of really, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't love it. I don't hate it at all. But I'm like in the middle, but a little bit above average when it comes to this signing because with Kellen Moore, he does not follow another coaching tree. He has been an upcoming play caller um, for a while, okay? And uh, uh, well-respected around the league, okay? And when it comes to his play call ability, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, executives and a, a lot of coaches around the re uh, league are really starting to respect what Kellen Moore uh, can do for your offense, okay? Now it comes down to what he has done so far. Um, in his career, even just in general, if you want to take the last, you know, five, six years, whatever, um, you know, he was with the Cowboys from 2019 to 2022. Okay, the Cowboys offensive ranks were sixth, 17th, first and fourth. I think Dak Prescott, I think, broke the pa franchise passing yard record or was it the touchdown record in 2021? I forgot which one. And this is when, Ga when Jason Garrett uh, was the head coach. Um, you know, um, and interesting enough, I mean, you know, the, you know, with the chargers last year, um, they ranked the 21st offense. Now a lot has to do with, you know, the front office, Brandon Staley was the coach, uh, in LA and on top of everything else, like the Eagles roster offensively to, to what the chargers had is two different teams. Okay. Justin Herbert was not having a fantastic year, not a great year, was definitely off last year. Um, I know a lot of people will start blaming the play caller, uh, but at the same time, I know Justin Herbert did miss a lot of wide open guys. I've watched a few Chargers games last year and saw Herbert missing a few guys here and there um, in a couple of games that he could have won. Uh, and I think he put him into really good position. Now, you know, I think... When he was in Dallas, I don't think you could blame Kellen Moore. And I, I know all the Cowboy fans are laughing at this, but at the end of the day, like, what has been the constant problem with the Cowboys? It's been Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott in big games um, and not being able to handle a very aggressive play caller in uh, Kellen Moore. Okay, uh, don't blame Justin Herbert, you know, for Kellen Moore's play calling. Don't don't blame, you know, Dak Prescott. It's always got to be the offensive coordinator. The coordinators are always, always the scapegoats. Um, but Kellen Moore is going to bring a lot to this team. The number one thing he's going to bring to it is every strand of Jalen Hurts' potential is going to be unleashed on the field he gets the most out of his quarterbacks and that is a hundred percent pre-stat motion holy crap we don't get that enough and let me tell you something watch some tape on the chargers watch more offensive tape on the chargers and i gotta say red zone looked really good pre-stat motion they've had keenan allen in the backfield doing some i mean there there was things that i was just really i really did like and there was, and and to be honest with you, I mean, he he does a lot of RPO, uh, run, runs, you know, his quarterbacks under center. I mean, he does. I mean, I think Jalen Hurts was only under center like twenty times last year. That's that's how bad it was. Okay, um, and he is an aggressive. He's he's aggressive on getting his wide receivers downfield, um, and all these different route combinations. And he does. He just does a lot. Now it comes down to the passing game. I couldn't really check from last year, but they they ran a good amount in red zone. I don't think they didn't run that much. I mean, Austin Eichler, I think, ran the ball a pretty a good amount of times. 
uh, last year. Because I know with, with Kellen Moore's offense, it's more passing. But at the end of the day, like, this is what Nick wants. This is, you know, Nick Sirianni, when he first got hired as the head coach, you know, this offense runs through A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard. Okay, if you look at some of the numbers, even under center, which I just I just did a video on this a few days ago because he interviewed for the coaching job. I mean, sorry, for the uh, offensive coordinator job. Now, the passing attempts uh, attempts under center um, from Herbert last year was 57. Prescott in 22 is 95. Jalen Hurts in 2023 was 20. Okay, now running the ball under center, Eichler, they ran the ball 83 times from under center. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott, obviously, 149, which is a huge number there. Um, and DeAndre Swift only ran 47 times under center. And that's half of what Eichler did almost. I mean, that's 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 insane. I mean, it's crazy. So um, just to show you how much they run plays under center and you give the defense a different look. And, you know, I, there's so many different things I'm looking at here. You're going to get the best out of your quarterback. Now, obviously, Jalen Hurts needs to be on point, okay? Can't have a year like he had this year. and like I said, a lot of Eagle fans are going to skip the coaching staff. They're going to sneak by the coaching staff and blame the quarterback 100%, which I cannot respect at all. I respect the opinion, but I can't respect the thought of that because there's just so much that was going that, that was just going on. I mean, your first half so your first halves of these games were non-productive. The Eagles never had a dominant game. Now, I know Kellen Moore's offenses, I think from last year, I think he only averages like 27 points a game, which really isn't that bad, but I mean, looking at some of the the charts, the 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 uh, route charts, Keenan Allen's route. I mean, I mean, this is nuts, man. What he's done with these. I mean, this is one receiver and a a hurt team in in L. A. with the Chargers. Okay, with really one serious weapon that's up there in age. Okay, Keenan Allen. And look at these routes. I mean, I mean, it's all over the place. If we showed this chart of what the Eagles did, it would be. Straight, you know, it would be literally comeback routes, a uh, 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 go, uh, you know, a comeback route, a uh, uh, hitch. Up. I mean, just it's it's just insane what he has done. I've seen Keenan Allen in the backfield. I've seen them move guys around. I mean, just imagine how he's going to use Devontae Smith and AJ Brown. Both of these guys have had two one thousand yard seasons. Both Devontae Smith and AJ Brown. Just imagine how they use those guys. In this offense, I think the creativity is there. There's no doubt about it. Running the football, we'll have to see um, what they do. I mean, there were some red zone plays I saw from the Chargers as well that I watched where, like, it would be a fake, a quick fake handoff, quick pass uh, to the flat. I mean, just really quick. And I think they're going to get Jalen Hurts into a momentum. And interesting to see how they use Jalen Hurts with his legs when he has to use his legs. You know, it might not be that much going into next year. You know, not trying to say they should focus on him being a pure pocket guy because once Jalen Hurts gets that speed back, you know, and his knee is 100% better because I think that's the one thing we did lose from this season. It's it's the it's the it's the the, the element from your offense with Jalen Hurts can run with the football in his hands and extend plays a lot longer and a lot quicker. Um can get upfield a lot quicker with no hesitation. I think Kellen Moore is going to make Jalen Hurts very comfortable and get him into rhythm. Um, like I said, you know, we don't have any running backs right now. We don't know what's going on with the roster. You know, we still have weeks and weeks. We have free agency in March. We have the draft in April. I'm really, and, and really, this is an offense that barely needs any weapons. I mean, your offense is pretty much set. Depending if Kelsey comes back and you're now, you know, just need, you need a running back, you need a wide receiver three. That It's like the least of my worries right now. Jalen Hurts is the least of my worries right now, but a coach that is going to push him, but not even just that, but Kellen Moore is, like I said, is going to get the best, is going to unleash every strand of Jalen Hurts' potential. That product is going to be unleashed on the field, and you are going to get the best out of him. Because number one, I think he's better than Dak Prescott, especially under pressure, and I think he's better than... Um, Obviously, than what they did in the uh, the Chargers, I, I think I think he's way better. You know, I think he's way better uh, than with some of these guys under pressure, and that's uh, just me at the end of the day. Um, you know, Herbert is a good quarterback. I think he's got a great future, but at the end of the day, I think um, we've seen a lot of games where Hurts had a lot of comeback games. You saw the gauntlet this year in the second half. Just imagine if you can put more production into your first half of these games. 
get these receivers more involved. I mean, you're you have two number one receivers on this team. I mean, it's this is going to be the best roster that Kellen Moore has been a part of offensively. Okay, I think we can all agree on that. And you have a quarterback that uh, is the comeback kid. That this guy can get you out of sticky situations and you know put into the right system and not this shotgun empty back set spread your receivers out and just you know and, and don't work middle of the field and have your receivers a foot away from other receivers running the same route route combinations taking too long so sick and tired of Jalen Hurts um you know uh, you know rolling to his right rolling in general and you know finding nobody open because these routes are still being developed and, and there's just no creativity it's like you're not even working middle of the field I mean I saw with Kellen Moore, one receiver's going all the way up, one's crossing middle of the field, one's... Go- I mean, there's a lot of creativity with this offense what Kellen Moore is going to bring into. I, I mean, Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown, I mean, this this offense should make... I mean, because this past year, who really feared this offense? You did a cover... How do you beat the Eagles this year in 23? It was they did a cover zero blitz. Hurts is going to stay in the pocket because he's not going to go anywhere, and that's it. You win the game. That's how you beat Jalen Hurts because, you know, the coaches never made the adjustments. And because the Eagles never had an experienced coach next to Sirianni, that that guy couldn't come in and say, hey, look, Nick, let us let me let me do the game plan. This There is nobody. They had way too many young guys around Nick Sirianni, and Sirianni couldn't help himself. He got full of himself after Steichen called the plays last year, got to a Super Bowl and said, you know what? I think I could do this myself. And I think he literally um, cut his nose despite his face. And, you know, that's what we got out of Nick. And I think Nick has been completely humbled. Now, you guys remember, Kellen Moore almost got the head coaching job in 2021 before Nick did. And the Eagles did interview Kellen Moore. But Kellen Moore is highly respected. I know Cowboy fans are going to laugh at it. But the one you should be laughing at is the one that keeps failing you is number four that's on the field every single week. Um, <laughs> and, and the big moments I've seen Jalen Hurts win in big moments. Just imagine a coach like this that could be well behind him. Okay. So this is going to be a wait and see approach type of thing. But what, from what I've seen between what the chargers had, especially Brandon Staley, one of the worst head coaches we've seen last year, a ton of injuries for the chargers. Even Herbert was injured all year. I mean, and not throwing accurately at all. How many? There was about three or four games that I watched that the Eagles weren't on that I saw uh, Justin Herbert throwing inaccurately, throwing like these bullets to to nobody, overthrowing, underthrowing. I mean, nonstop. Could have won a few more games. Um, but you know, like I said, like I know it's going to go back onto the offensive coordinator. I know that Kellen Moore did interview for the Browns job. Uh, but I think this is something we all really have to open up to. And I'm opening up to it, and I'm not against it. Even when I saw this last night, I was like, oh, interesting, cool. Okay, well, let me look into more of this to see what Kel Moore is going to bring to the table. And I think the number one thing, like I said, is going to be getting the best out of your quarterback to working all the weapons for Jalen Hurts, getting the best out of your wide receivers. Because let me tell you something, they – the Chargers were working Keenan Allen and the rest of these receivers all over the place. And he loves being aggressive, putting his receivers downfield. I mean, which is, I, I love to see, you know, and he does, and he does a lot of quick things in the red zone as well. Like throwing to the running backs in the flat really fast. And I've seen a lot of quick fake handoff, you know, quick passes, like nice combination of plays uh, between distribution to the running back to the quick passing game, which is awesome. Um, you know, and, and, and obviously I think this is going to benefit Jalen Hurts' legs too, because it's going to make, uh, you know, I, I think, I think between Jalen Hurts' rushing to how patient he could be in the pocket, um, is definitely going to help a hundred percent. I think we have set ourselves up with, you know, as much as I wanted Eric B enemy, you know, maybe Cliff, you know, Kingsbury was going to be the guy, but eh, he does a lot of no empty sets, you know, he does uh, no, you know, no empty sets in the, in the backfield and, he likes to pass, you know, he's he's good at you know, kind of coordinating the pass well to get the receivers open. But I think here you have some way that's going to get the most out of what you're going to get out of your quarterback to your wide receivers and is going to probably put more points on the board. Like I said, I think this is going to be the best roster he's going to be coaching. I think he's been dying to coach this offensive roster the last few years. 
Um, you know, and he didn't waste any time. I mean, this, I mean, I know that until uh, Harbaugh was um, hired in LA for the Chargers, I mean, they were holding off on Kellen Moore even interviewing for anything at this point. And finally, when they hired him, they let him do what he wanted. And um, for some reason, Kellen Moore has been connected to this team the last few years, especially for the head coaching job when he tried to get that. Um, and it was well deserving because, you know, da- after Dallas, you know, during, you know, even with, with Dallas, he, uh, you know, he's had top 10, top five, you know, offenses those years, but didn't have the quarterback to do it. Um, so I think there's a, a lot to take from this. And I hope people are going to open up to it. I don't think people are going to open up to it now. Um, and like I said, I, I think uh, this is like a wait and see approach. And with Kellen Moore, um, there is a there is a fresh idea coming to the Eagles that Nick I think is going to welcome one hundred percent. And I'm trying to explain it as much as I can without sounding stupid, but um, I, I do like it. I think it's really solid. I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm on board, but I'm just gonna be on board and not go over my head a little bit. But I I like the ideas, and I think Nick is gonna like I said is gonna welcome that and. Um, I think good things are going to happen. You know, we'll we'll see. Um, and and uh, I think it's going to be a very creative. Um, and I think we're going to be. I think we're going to be floored by the time the season starts and see uh, you know, what he has up his sleeve um, when it comes to probably one of the best offensive rosters that is Super Bowl bound. Um, you know, but like I said, the you know Jalen Hurts needs to play well. He needs to go through his progressions and. Um, you know, once they get a new QB coach and, you know, I, I think with another off season, a restart, a refresh, um, the roster will be very excited. Devontae Smith and, and, and AJ Brown are probably really happy right now. And from what I've seen so far, I, I think it, I, I think it's pretty solid. I think he fits here really well. And I really like the fact that Kellen Moore is not trying to, he's not off of a certain tr- coaching tree. Kellen Moore is trying to be his own coach. And I have to respect that with him okay he's not following in somebody's footsteps he's not the best friend of the best offensive coordinator in the league or you know he's he's just he's making his own mark as an offensive coordinator and he's been well respected around the league as one of the young offensive minds what is he like 35 years i don't know how how old he is um you know and i think that's something to take into account and um i'm excited it just brings excitement to me that i want to see how this offense is going to be unveiled and who they sign and, um, you know, the different plays we're going to see. And, you know, maybe this will bring DeAndre Swift back. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the running game is going to be, how they kind of work the running game into this offense. And I, I think, you know, Kellen, I think they're bringing in Kellen Moore because we want to score points quick and fast. Um, you know, you have the offense, you have a top three offensive line. Dallas Goddard should be more involved. I mean, and Kellen Moore knows how to use receivers, knows how to use quarterbacks, and that's his M.O., okay? Um, it's up to Jalen Hurts and the rest of the roster, but uh, I think this was a really good signing and um, try to explain it as much as I possibly can, but I think um, I think it's good. I, I'm going to wait and see, but I feel good. I'm not like – there's going to be a lot of people freaking out about it. I already know it's going to happen. Anybody that we hire as of right now, yeah, they could have went after – yeah, I get it. I mean, we don't know what's going on in other situations with Kingsbury. We don't know what's going on with uh, – we haven't heard any rumors with, with EB at all. We haven't heard any rumors from Washington that he was even looking at other jobs. I haven't seen him interview. Eric Biennemi hasn't really looked at anything else. I haven't heard anything, no news at all. So let me know what you guys think about Kellen Moore. I think this was really good. Um, I think this was solid, and, and uh, I, I, you know, your offense is going to look totally different next year. There's, there's no doubt. It's, it's going to get better. It's going to get better automatically. I think any coach would be, would be better than what Nick's game plan was, but they're bringing in an experienced young mind. Not just young, but a ton of experience because he's, he's been coaching for a while at a young age, at an even younger age, you know? So he's been up, he's been upcoming and well-respected. And, you know, can he get the most out of Jalen Hurts? Can he get the most out of our receivers? I think there's a good chance. I think there's there's some really good signs pointing to this. And I think, People need to start welcoming it, welcoming it, and giving 
giving Kellen Moore a chance. I think a lot of people, you know, because he's an ex Dallas Cowboy coordinator, and I think people are just very generic on not wanting somebody because he was a part of a rival team or who gives a shit. It's not like he went from the Cowboys to the Eagles. He was already on the Chargers for a year. So um, I think that number 27 or 21 will go up to top 10 when it comes to offense. And um, I'm, I'm ready for it. So that was the news on Kellen Moore. And like I said before, beginning of the video, Vic Fangio is official with the Philadelphia Eagles. We saw this from a mile away when the Eagles were late to the press conference. And with Vic Fangio, you're getting accountability. And look, I, I, I went through so many videos already talking about Vic Fangio and what he would bring here. And I think um, if you're going to get a guy that's, you know, part of the Vic Fangio tree, get the guy, get the guy that's the mastermind of, um, you know, this Ben don't break type defense. And I understand I'm not a big fan of this scheme at all, but they have to get the players for it. And I think Vic Fangio is going to have a hundred percent power in the players that he gets and tells Howie, I don't want James Bradbury try to just try to get rid of him any way possible. He's going to have a lot of control and, you know, we need an asshole. We need a prick in the building. That's going to push this roster. Okay. The number one thing they have to go out and get for this scheme is the coverage linebackers because they don't fucking have any. And that's the number one thing. The Eagles reportedly could probably have over $50 million in cap space, depending on the restructures and some of the moves that they can make to free up a lot of cap, some cap casualties on the team. The Eagles could, you know, never really have this much money. And, and trust me, they can go out and sign, you know, a big time free agent safety, a big time. I think there'll be a I think there'll be two big splash signings from the Eagles defensively. And we'll see, you know, they can always because offensively you're looking for a wide receiver three, you're looking for maybe, you know, you're you're looking to re-sign maybe a guy or two, or whatever. Nothing crazy. Okay. But defensively, you know, you have some really good draft compensation. You have, you know, you're gonna have a lot, you're gonna have a good amount of money to spend too, whether it's two big splashes. Um, you know, and maybe a couple mid tier, maybe low tier contracts as backups or whatever. I mean, there, there's, there's going to be enough to do here when it comes to the defense. You know, we have to prioritize all of what we have on our defense, but I'm interested to see what moves they make to free up more cap. And, you know, like Vic Fangio, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. It's just not the scheme that I like, but, um, he's got the control to put the right players in the right position to win football games. And, he will have 100% full control of who he brings in the building and who he wants out of the building. There's no doubt. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna, I'm ready to roll with it. I'm ready to roll with all of it. And, uh, you know, like, I want to see this team tackle better. I want to see them get defensive turnovers and get pick sixes and be exciting again. And I want this defensive line to hit home. I think Fangio, you know, he's he was ranked third in pressures last year with the defensive line he had. I think a lot of players liked his scheme. There might be a lot of stupid reports coming out that players hate his scheme and they're glad he's gone or whatever the case may be. You know what? There might be players that don't like the scheme. There might be a lot of good players that really like his scheme. So I think we just have to give it a chance on both sides. And, you know, we have to nitpick at things throughout the off season. But I think uh, this is a, you know, I think both of these moves are good. I think the, the number one thing that comes into effect when you see Kellen Moore, when you see Vic Fangio, and when you're seeing like, linebacker coach for you know with with uh you know joe barry and some of these other guys you're looking at experience the eagles are bringing in ideas they're bringing in long-term experience and guys that potentially could be here a lot longer because if you get a guy that literally has never been a you know maybe maybe kel moore will have a head coaching job in a few years or something like that if that's the case but you know vic fangio has been a head coach before he's been a defensive coordinator a million times so, you know, the, since he has a really good relationship with the front office and was a consultant for the Eagles in 2022 or Super Bowl year, left a couple weeks before the Super Bowl because he thought that Jonathan Gannon was staying in Philadelphia. So he had no choice but to sign with another team. So the Eagles went out and got Sean Desai because Desai worked under Vic Fangio as a defensive quality control guy for a few years with the Bears. And then once Fangio left, you know, Desai became, you know, the new defensive coordinator. And then the Eagles picked him up later on, um, you know, because he was the closest to the Fangio tree, I guess. But it just didn't work out. And this wasn't Desai's playbook. It was Nick's game plan. And, uh, you know, 
having the mastermind of this scheme here is a really good sign and could put this thing over the top. So got to give it time between free agency, the draft, the moves that they do make, moves are going to happen. It's going to be a crazy offseason between both coordinators and Vic Fangio and obviously having Kellen Moore giving bright ideas and really just molding this offense into one of the best offenses in the league, which I really think he can because he's got two number one receivers, a top three offensive line, um, a top five tight end. And, you know, you just got to get a couple, you know, a running back and, you know, however they want to treat the running game is what they're going to treat it. They run under center. They run RPOs. They quick passes at the line. You name it. The receivers are running different routes, middle of the field being used. It's almost a dream at this point. And it puts a smile on my face. And I'm going to give it a chance. And I, I kind of want, you know, let's see if, you know, Kellen Moore can actually you know, it's going to have a good season with the Eagles. And, and I think this is, like I said, this is the best roster that Kellen Moore is going to have. So this is a good roster. And I think he knows it. I think he's excited to see uh, just what, you know, how he wants to use it. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about it. I really am. The more I talk about it, the more excited I'm getting. And I know there's going to be a lot of negative comments and I get it first, you know, but I've been negative for the last seven weeks and it's time for me to be a little positive about things. So at least they're doing some things that are actually working. You know, Nick's still here, but they fired who we wanted fired, really. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, um, they didn't keep any of the other coaches. So, and there'll be more firings happening and more hirings happening. So I'm excited to see linebacker coach hiring. I'm excited to see who, you know, maybe if they get rid of the wide receiver coach, maybe Tracy Rocker goes. I don't know. This is up to Fangio and Kellen Moore's on hire his own QB coach. And I'm excited to see what they do here. And hopefully, the, and then see these press conferences. I'm actually really excited Let's see what they have to say and what they're going to do. And I'm, I'm pretty pumped about it. So you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Let me know what you guys think about the Vic Fangio hiring. And let me know what you guys think about Kellen Moore. And be realistic about it. Don't have the generic answers that he doesn't run the ball. And I get, like, you know, they do run the ball and, and probably not as much as they should. Um, but this is a pass-first team, and they're not swaying away from it. When you have two receivers like you have in this building and a quarterback that has – that's a dual threat and can be used as one. Kellen Moore is going to exploit that, exploit that 100%. And I'm really excited about it. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Shake some up, follow side. Peace out, guys. Peace. Have a great day.